Valentine's Day. Usually I'd be on the road, but clearly that's not happening. We're having a pretty serious issue on the truck that could turn into a truck not running anymore. Essentially what I did yesterday is I took a bottle of water, put it in my overflow tube, and I built up the pressure on my engine to where the thermostats would open and it was bubbling up and I disconnected the airline from the air compressor so it's not building any pressure in the system however uh, I don't think that fully disconnects the air compressor so what I'm gonna do today is take a bucket of water run the air compressor lines into the bucket of water so it's pulling its own coolant completely disconnected and disconnect the airline so that way it's 100% disconnected from the system and I'm also gonna take thermostats out so then I don't have to wait for the engine to warm up so if there is an issue other than the air compressor I can see it present right away basically what we're testing for is if my head gasket is gone uh, which would be absolutely absolutely amazing if the air compressor was bad Granted, I did buy it online and it was a remanufactured air compressor. So we don't know how good that thing is. Uh, so yeah, it wasn't from dealer. So it would be amazing if that was the issue. However, it's a very likely chance that it is my head gasket. It's building so much pressure in my uh, uh, overflow tank on my coolant it's crazy it'll kick out like two three gallons of coolant through my overflow within like 500 miles it's crazy and uh i'm just afraid that it's gonna kick out that pressure elsewhere instead of there and it's gonna cause even more damage but yeah like the thing is you guys know i did an in-frame on this and granted the guy that did the in-frame he said hey if you want to bring it back here I'll go ahead and throw a new head gasket on myself. Everything, you know, guaranteed labor and then parts free. However, he said the way it's looking, your issue is probably like your block that wasn't touched. And that, we've discussed this before. It's an issue that there's just a misunderstanding there. Block wasn't touched. And the thing is, this truck's had three in-frames done. So you're talking three in-frames, block was never out of the truck. Uh, I'm not sure if, if the, the crank gets balanced and your dampener needs to get replaced. To my understanding, if you don't do that, your crankshaft isn't gonna spin you know, evenly and it's gonna vibrate, essentially screws up your piston rings. Your piston rings are screwed up, creates blow by, which my truck has, et cetera, et cetera. So it just, it, it's a mess and an auto frame is extremely expensive to do it at the dealer and it's very even more time consuming because they got everything take everything apart so i've looked into like a crate motor as you guys know like i'm i'm seventy thousand dollars deep into this truck already so you know like i have a new transmission new new full brakes seals bearings uh uh slack adjusters brake chambers uh new kingpin new steering box a lot of a lot of parts other than that rebuild the rebuild itself was like on just under 20 grand like 18 grand or so and on top of that 18 grand i put like thirty thousand dollars into other things which obviously you know some of those are things that do wear out like tires and, and brakes and whatnot but it's things that i should be good for you know a few years down the road with so uh it's a tough spot man it's a tough spot i'm, I'm fingers crossed that it could be the air compressor but signs show a very low chance of that. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, as you can see, we're at the truck. So air compressor is right here. Essentially what I'm gonna do is take this line. I'm gonna empty the coolant on the other side. And as you can see, like I installed a brand new oil pan as well uh, with the new gasket and it kicks out coolant on the other side of the corner, not coolant uh, oil. So it's, it's weird, but uh, yeah so essentially what we're gonna do is take this line stick it in a bucket and take this line stick it in the bucket put an extender on it and then basically put a five gallon bucket here so it can pull its own coolant hopefully and i am seeing signs of coolant right here 
which I think is just that that hose in the back is leaking a little bit, but we will see. Uh, so we'll see once we completely take this apart and then take out the thermostat. Once we fire it up, if there's no blow by up there, then the issue is the uh, uh, air compressor, which air compressor is $1,100. And I'd love to replace an air compressor rather than get a new engine because auto frame is expensive and a, a crate motor is like $30,000 for a long block. A long block is only your block and your head and internals, nothing else. And that's from Freightliner. But yeah, as you can see, like it's throwing coolant all over here through my overflow pipe right here um, and everywhere down here. And it'll start leaking right there in the corner. And I've sealed this pan up so many times that I was like starting to think, well, maybe it's just a bad oil pan. It's old. I went and bought a new oil pan and, you know, still same thing. And I think that's just to the fact of the, of the, uh, blow by and the pressure in the engine um, and I mean as you can see these pipes you know are definitely getting bubbly up as this pipe right here so there's definitely a lot of pressure like you'll see right now if I go up there and open that cap yesterday I went and delivered so I did like a 20 mile run I literally just went and delivered so the truck didn't drive like 40 50 miles but you'll see when I open that cab, there's gonna be so much pressure in there. It's insane. So let's grab some gloves. So, uh, yeah, this is all my compressor wiring and whatnot. What I like to do is always grab two rags and go slow. You'll hear it. You heard that pressure. That relieved one hell of a pressure. And there's coolant up to here. And the coolant literally like dropped. It was holding it lifted up from the pressure. So yeah, we'll see. Uh, and especially since I got, a, I got a new cap, I feel like it's been getting worse. I feel like the old cap was letting it breathe a little bit more and it literally got worse with this new overflow cap. But yeah, what we're gonna do is drain out the coolant and then take out these hoses and run to the store and uh, get extender on these and yeah, do what we said. So let's get to it. Ain't gonna get done by itself. My bad, my bad. Right, we got we got this DIY kitchen faucet shit. And uh basically there's coolant in our uh injectors and fuel there. And what I did is I connected the wrong hose to the intake instead of the compressor, so it threw coolant inside the heads. So basically what we're doing right now is suck all of it out and then we took the injectors out and this head is I think topped out and I want to show you how this stuff works and just a little bit of fuel in this Why you stop recording cuz oh no you didn't <laughs> Gotta clean this mess out now that was definitely a first time going that deep into the motor but uh fired up idling i took thermostats out but uh i'm not seeing any bubbles which is weird nothing has changed and there's no bubbles i'm gonna try to get the temperature up but without thermostats in there it's gonna be harder to get the temperature up but the truck's running so that's great news i almost screwed it up real bad i just want to share this tip because i've been having issues with it that landing gear would go up only a third of the way this one was fine and i thought about replacing a whole landing gear and then this guy told me go ahead and park somewhere where this can go all the way down way past beyond or where it ever been down so what i did is i built these ramps i lifted these axles up lowered it all the way down 
and it went back up, no problem. Just figured I'd share that with somebody. Definitely save you a lot of money because that landing gear right now at Great Dane is $500. This one here is $700 plus labor. You're probably looking at $1,500, $1,600 to do these two landing gears because somebody has to weld this. These brackets don't come on the landing gear. Anyways, figure I'd share the tip. All right, what's up everybody? Hopefully we don't get interrupted by people walking by. Anyways, uh, Draft Tools sent me out this reel and uh, I promised them I would do a video. So that's uh, what we're gonna do here. We're gonna unbox it, show you kind of what comes in it. It's a pressure washer reel. They sent me out a electric reel for extension cord and it looks like it's starting to rain. And they also sent me out an air hose reel. My garage is a mess, but and I'll show you that in another chance, but I figured I would show you this now. As far as truck, I managed to fix my landing gear. Uh, there's a short video on it in my videos. You can look at it. And also, I have a bunch of other videos that are going to be uploaded actually after this video because I'm wanting to create this video really because I promised them I would make it quick, so I'm going to make it before other ones. I'll show you kind of what comes in here, so I have video on it. But yeah, truck's running. Uh, coolant is out of the, the head and everything out of intake everything's cleared off fires up no problem but we're still trying to figure out if the head is damaged I put new thermostats in and see how it rolls because with the thermostats removed there was zero pressure again built up so that was kind of weird I don't think that thermostat would cause bubbling up there because if my thermostat was bad I'd be overheating but we'll see anyways let's bring you to the box show you what comes in the uh, pressure wash so right here on top you can get your uh, handbook who reads who reads those nowadays probably should just like a little bottle my hands are all filthy and you cut my nails but I was working on the truck you know it is working man hands this is your extension and nice, nice thing is these will actually clip in Obviously, if you ever seen a pressure washer, you know what this is. It comes with bolts, so you can mount it on the wall, which obviously what you should do. I might mount it outside, actually, right here, since I don't really want a pressure washer inside. But then again, haven't decided yet. So we'll see. Let's take this out. And all right. There's your reel. Let's take this thing out and show you what it looks like. All right. Well, here it is. Seems like legit quality, really. I would assume this is your on-off button. And then this is your reel. I believe this is a 100-foot reel, so it's it's a lot of uh, reel. And I mean, it's plastic. There's not a lot of metal or anything that would really rust, so I don't think it would have issues being outside. In the back here, this is your mounting plate that you can remove and then just stick it on after you bolt it to the wall. This is your outlet, obviously. And that's your hose connection. And then you get your handle, obviously, and pretty much that's it. It's pretty simple. Once I do install it on a wall, I will make a video. Like I said, they sent me this out to try out, make a video on it, share my thoughts. I'm not paid, but I did get a free product. So I'm just doing that. And then as I said, this is another reel from them. I really use this a lot, especially like when I'm airing up my tires. You know, and you just pull it and it'll go right back. Yeah, big, big mess in the garage. And then I also use this reel as well, a lot. And then you just, I just push it to the side. Yeah, it's a big mess in this garage. We're still, we're still, uh, Sorting everything else out. This car was actually getting fixed. Did the harmonic balancer, water pump, thermostat, all the belts. First time installing a stretch belt, I must say. Would have been a very expensive service at BMW, but we did it ourselves. Also did a new EGR cooler right up here. Gotta love diesels. But yeah, back to the point. Showed you what it looks like. And uh, yeah, we'll keep you posted on it and catch you folks on the road.